Well, off we go. Just great. Right. Don't tell me! Time is over! Hey, oh, nothing gets by me! If they rush you, you gotta get for cover, okay? Take this! Blue escape! A charge like that could easily be fatal. Just as well, I'm here to stop them. Prepare to be sealed! Slash! Demon Fang! Blue escape! Damn, if you can do it, you gotta be quick, or I'll take them all myself. You're really, really strong, Alvin. I'm just trying to do the best I can. Still, I'm reassuring to have you around. As impressive as always. You're always improving. No, I, I mean, you're even better than ever. I've never seen Tion actually look sweat. Great. <sighs> That's some power you wield. You're the one who did the heavy lifting. Hey, Shion, where does your gun come from? What do you mean, where does it come from? When you're fighting, it looks like it just appears out of nowhere. Oh, that's transferal technology. When I don't need my weapon, I submerge it in empty space. And when I do, I summon it. Make sense? Not really, but it sounds pretty amazing. Huh? Well, that way you don't have to carry around any heavy weapons or worry about enemies trying to steal them, right? It's a pretty cool invention. You realize you're praising the technology of your enemies, right? So? Technology is technology. It's not good or bad in and of itself. I guess that's true. Should we really take this? Hey, Rinwell. Do you always have to say an incantation before you cast an art? Yeah. They don't really add any extra power or anything, but reciting them is what allows the astral energy to come together and flow through me. It takes time to complete, but they're what lets me use such strong magic in the first place. 
What happens if someone interrupts you while you're in the middle of chanting? Then I have to start over from the beginning. As soon as my concentration breaks, any astral energy I've accumulated disperses. Got it. So once you start reciting, that's our cue to make sure that no enemies can get near enough to disrupt you. Yeah, that would be appreciated. Although, I do have one fun trick up my sleeve. Once I finish chanting a full incantation, I can hold on to a single astral art without casting it right away. So once the astral energy's in place, you can choose to set it off whenever you want? That's amazing! Yeah, I don't fully have the hang of it just yet, but I'm sure it'll come in handy sooner or later. There's something in the water. I should probably think about tonight's menu. Break a sweat. Hmm. What? Right. Hmm. Anyway. <sighs> Got it. Come on, guys. We've got lots to do. This should be a good place to fight. Wow, Kisara. It's so big. You're... you're talking about my shield, right? Those things I sometimes see you chuck out in the middle of fights. What? You mean my bombs? Bombs? As in the things people use to clear out rocks? But I could have sworn I saw something other than fire burst from some of yours. That's because these aren't ordinary bombs. They're specially made ones filled with astral energy. Hmm. 
Okay. And why do you shoot the bombs after you release them? It's a part of my strategy. The effects of my bombs change when I fire bullets of a different astral element at them. It makes it difficult for enemies to predict what effect they'll have, or when they'll go off. One moment you're using powerful bombs, the next you're using powerful healing arts. They're kind of on the opposite ends of the spectrum, aren't they? Think of it this way. If you ever get caught up in the blast of one of my bombs and you manage not to die, I'll be able to heal you using my arts. Hmm. I'll do my best to not die then. Sure did. The part where you swung and missed, right? Not that part! I've noticed that sometimes we come across enemies who fight like you and try to dodge our attacks at the last second. I hate those guys. I can get some hits in when they move in to attack, but otherwise they slip past damn near everything else I throw at them. If what you're seeking is a way to more reliably hit them, there is a solution. Try to outclass them on reflexes? I possess the ability to command Earth elemental beings to some extent. They emerge as the land itself and take root on my command. They will swiftly bind the enemies, at which point you can dispatch them. Huh? Uh, what he means is that he can make plants grow to hold the enemies in place. At least I think that's probably what he's saying. I'm glad at least one of us understands him. So basically, if we find an enemy that likes to dodge, we should let Doholim handle it. I shall do what I can within my modest means to help.
I... I think I'm getting stronger. I wonder what we'll find out there this time. Most likely Zoogles, I would reckon. I mean, other than them. Tremendously. The speed and precision of your aim is simply unmatched. I... I had no idea you were watching me so closely. Whew. I don't sense any more enemies. Unfortunate. Okay, off we go. I always hear you muttering to yourself whenever we're in battle. So, uh, just what are you saying? Why do you want to know? Does it bother you or something? Not really. It's just the way you talk is sometimes kind of creepy. So I was wondering if you vent your frustration through your magic. Are you yelling, you stupid jerk, or something like that to pump yourself up? What? No, that's not what's happening during my incantations. I'm just focused. So I match my tone to fit the mood of whatever I'm trying to invoke. Invoke? Uh, how do I put it? Basically, the elemental astral energy behind each art, I guess. Astral energy? Hold on, are you saying you can talk to astral energy? Uh, not exactly. But if I put emotion into what I say, it's easier for me to properly cast my arts. That makes sense? Kind of. Okay, so if you can talk to astral energy, then you can ask it to, like, predict the weather or find secret treasure? Wait, you don't really think that, do you? Or you can ask it to send down lightning to where there's bad guys lurking and... May lightning condemn those who bear fall! Thunderblade! Ah, what are you doing? You almost fried me with that! I just asked the astral energy to send down lightning where there were annoying boys. Tell me, Dohalim, has that skill of yours got a name? And what skill would this be, pray tell? You know, when you're talking to people around town, the way they suddenly become putty in your hands. I'm afraid I don't quite follow. I do. 
It's called friendly intimidation. Look imposing and speak in a deep, booming voice, and presto, you'll have people wrapped around your finger in no time. I would never stoop to such scandalous tricks. Any feelings of intimidation are solely in the eye of the beholder. So there is a knack to it! How do you learn it? Can anyone do it? Now you've got me curious. Is there special training to master? Hmm, let's see. An obsession with being elegant is a must. Oh, and it helps to be old-fashioned, too. Bonus points if you speak in a way no one can understand. If you've a bone to pick with me, it'd be quicker to just come out and say it. What? They look up to you, that's all. I'm just helping them along. Hey! What's got into Alvin and Law all of a sudden? I can barely understand a word they're saying. And what's with the weird poses? Was it something they ate? I hope you're willing to take the blame for this one. I wasn't expecting them to take me so seriously. I'll go and have a word with them. What do you all say to taking the path less trodden for once? Path? I don't see any path. Do you mean that thing that looks like an animal trail? Path may be a generous term. I'm assuming you know where it leads? Hmm. My gut says to a bridge. <laughs> Hoodle says your gut's wrong. Really? Well, it is definitely in the right general direction. Not that main roads are necessarily danger-free, but he does have an uncanny knack for insisting on some strange and unique routes. Alfin always did like a challenge. Can't say I appreciate some of the more daredevil ways he's taken us, though. Like the landslide he insisted was a shortcut before disappearing off the edge? Nearly gave me a heart attack. I'll say, yet the intrepid explorer looked as happy as a pig in muck. Probably best we stick to doing our own orienteering in the future. Hey, so what about this route then? Maybe if we pretend we can't hear him. Don't you think the path forward is fraught enough without making extra problems for ourselves? Maybe best to reel it back. Good point. I say we stick to the main track like regular travelers for once. Uh, guys? <sighs> I will break down this wall! looking at it yeah it probably mess us up good Ready? 
energy is surging around me. How do you even know about all that astrally stuff? Same way I know what you do in the middle of the night. What? Are you serious? Could be worth something. You guys want to rest here? Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
87! 88! 89! Oh, shoot! What the? Is the enemy attacking? Uh, sorry about that. You're not hurt, are you? Law? What on Dana are you doing? What am I doing? Training, obviously. I found these nice and heavy rocks that I decided to strap onto my arms, but I guess I didn't tie them down good enough because they went flying. So you were doing improvised weight training. <laughs> you and your crazy ideas. I can't help it. If I'm not training, it's easy for me to get anxious. Well, that's fair. Actually, I remember seeing you practicing your forms for some time when we were camping the other day. Yep. No amount of muscle will do you any good if you don't stay on top of your fighting forms. It always feels good when I know I'm still sharp. Sounds to me like you have too much pent-up energy. Don't train so hard that you wind up hurting yourself, Law. I promise you, you're already perfectly strong as it is. No, I'm not. You never know what we'll run into out there. You can never go into a fight too prepared. And that's the truth. Besides, I won't rest until I know that I'm stronger than you, Alfin. <laughs> oh, I see how it is. Well, I don't plan on letting you beat me. Hmm. Maybe I'll add some weights to my sword and practice swinging it. That should help out. Uh, Alvin, are you crazy? <clears throat> You're right. This does make for decent training. Good call with the extra weight law. Right? Now you get it? Since we've already come this far, what do you say we have a little one-on-one -on -one with our rocks strapped on? Hell yeah! I'm down for that! Just give me a second, I'll be all ready to roll! Okay! I'm all set! Let's do this! Take this! I'm just getting started! Ah! Our camp is completely wrecked! Go. You two are cleaning it up. Yes, yes Shion. Shion. Uh, what? Hey, guys. I don't see any of our food anywhere. What? I know. The bag we kept it all in has vanished. <sighs> Some Zoogles must have gotten in behind us and swiped the whole thing while we were fighting. What? Huh? What are you guys talking about? This affects you too, you know! We lost all our food, including all those sweets you love so freaking much! What? How could this happen? Those sweets are the highlight of my day! Oh, so hungry. Hunger is like that. The moment you know there's nothing you can do about it, it becomes that much more unbearable. Whoever did this, I swear I'm gonna make them pay for stealing our supplies. <sighs> All that's left now is this one lonesome apple. <gasps> Law? What? Hey, don't look at me like that. I picked this apple myself. I'm not just gonna... Food. Hand it over. <laughs> Stay away! <laughs> Hmm... Hey, I'm back! Uh... Huh? What the heck happened here? <sighs> Only a pointed reminder of how dangerous a food shortage can be in a collective. A serious problem indeed. And one we should all be mindful of. I... I see. Does it have anything to do with why you're holding our food supply bag behind your back? Thanks for waiting. Eat as much as you like. 